Hello, and welcome to LEGO Challenge with the Warren County Library System. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Library. Before COVID, I used to host LEGO clubs at the Southwest Branch, but right now, that's just not possible. So I moved my programs online instead. Over the summer, I made a series called LEGO Lovers. Each week, we explored different creations made by LEGO artists and LEGO masters. Then I challenged our patrons, that's you, to create their own LEGO masterpieces. You can watch them all on our library YouTube channel anytime you want a bit of inspiration. But this fall, I thought I'd change it up a bit. And that's what brings us to LEGO Challenge. Each week, I'll have a different themed building challenge for you. In addition to showing you examples for inspiration, we'll talk about ways that you can develop your LEGO building skills. So that we stay in touch all week long, I've created a digital wall on Padlet where you can share what you've made. If you go to the website, you can share pictures and videos of your creations and see what others have made. Since I'll be there moder moderating what's shared, it's a safe place to meet others that love Legos. Okay, let's get to our challenge for today. Our theme today is National Hispanic Heritage Month. That means we have lots to be invited and inspired by this week. Are you ready to learn more? Let's go. Okay, let's learn a little bit about Hispanic heritage and culture as we celebrate National Hispanic Heritage Month. So, National Hispanic uh, Heritage Month uh, was officially recognized in the 80s uh, here in America, and the whole idea is to celebrate the history, culture, and contributions of Hispanic Americans to um, our country. So um, it's celebrated from September 15th to October 15th, and we'll talk about why that's important in a little bit, but primarily this is meant to celebrate people whose ancestors have come from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America who identify as Hispanic. Um, it does also include uh, Latino and Latinx um, cultures, and we're going to talk about that real quick. So here's a map just in case you are not familiar with these countries. I do want to make sure that you kind of have a sense of where they are. Um, obviously Spain is over here in Europe, and many colonizers came from Spain to America and were um, some of the earliest people to settle in America. And in fact, Spanish is one of the first um, foreign languages spoken in America. In fact, it might be the first. Um, and then we have South America here. Okay, countries like Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, and Panama. Um, and then in Central America, we have Costa Rica, Nicaragua, uh, Honduras, Salvador, Guatemala. We have Mexico, of course. Um, and then we have uh, islands like Cuba, Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico. Um, you may notice that like Brazil and um, some other countries are not labeled. And, and here's why. This is a map that I got of Spanish speaking countries. And so Hispanic specifically refers to someone who is from or descended of someone who is from a Spanish speaking country. But countries like Portugal, for example, um, may be considered Latino, Latina or Latinx, um, but not necessarily Hispanic because they don't speak Spanish. OK, but they come from still a Latin American country. So um, this month is meant to celebrate both Hispanic and Latinx cultures. OK, and that's really important. You know, we don't want to we're not looking to exclude anybody here. We're looking to celebrate all those contributions. Um, so I mentioned the dates as being really significant. September 15th is important because it's actually the anniversary of independence for many Latin American countries, including Costa Rica, El Salvador, uh, Guatemala, Honduras and Nicaragua. Um, Mexico and Chile celebrate their independence on September 8th, uh, 16th and 18th. Um, it's just about a minute long. so. <laughs> please understand it's not going to cover everything but it gives you a little bit of the flavor of Hispanic culture here in America. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? What is Hispanic? Traces back to our great grandparents. They came here for a better future. We come from different parts of the world. I am from Chile and El Salvador. I'm Mexican. Guatemalan. I'm Dominican. I'm Argentina. I'm Hispanic and I dance Latina. <laughs> We have really, really good food. I like mango, platanos, tamales, the pupusas. I can eat four tacos. Chimichurri is my favorite. Hamburgers, too. <laughs> All that food needs a celebration. Dia de los Muertos, los Reyes Magos. Three kings today. I want to be 
a dance teacher, a firefighter. I want to be a scientist, professional soccer player. I love singing. I like to roller skate. My dream is a reality. I can be anything. Our culture unites, unites us. Our music is beautiful. It makes me want to dance all the time. I love English. I speak Spanish and English. I love to draw and paint. I love dogs. I'm outgoing. I'm happy. This is my hair. This, this is, is my heritage. heritage. That's me. Eso soy That's me. Eso soy yo. Esta soy yo. That's, That's me. me. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, I think that gives you just kind of a, a little overview of the music, the art, the culture, the, the dancing, the food. Um, that's part of Hispanic heritage. Um, you also may want to know that religion is often very important to Hispanic culture. Many um, Hispanic families are Catholic. It is one of the predominant religions um, in Latin America. Um, and family plays in a huge role in many Hispanic families. Um, and so many of their celebrations are centered around getting together with family and making, you know, delicious meals together. So how can we go from here? <laughs> All right, so how can you learn more? Well, luckily there is a website, hispanicheritagemonth.gov that has all kinds of resources on it. Um, there's artwork like this piece on Frida. Um, there's pieces on um, video, there's music, there's history. There are lesson plans for educators or homeschoolers. So it's just a huge resource. And I really do encourage you to go to this website and learn more. It is really fascinating. And um, there are so many cultures that come together for National Hispanic Heritage Month that you could spend your whole year just learning about these wonderful cultures and how that they have made a really huge impact on the America that we have today. So let us look at some of those cultural items first. Okay, so Hispanic and Latinx culture, full of tradition, full of many festive holidays. Um, and those holidays tend to be very colorful and again, include family and dancing and music. Um, now, what's important to understand about all of this is that every Spanish-speaking country, every Latin American country has their own traditions. You can't just lump them in and pretend that they're all the same. They aren't. Um, so I'm just touching on some tiny bits of the cultural elements. You really need to go to that website to get a much deeper understanding. Um, and many of these traditions too can span back hundreds or thousands of years. Remember, indigenous people, like the um, those who came from the Mayans and the Aztec people are here in America. They are part of the Hispanic culture and their cultures have been around longer than America has been. So this is just the tiniest tip of the iceberg here that we're just gonna talk about some of the more common elements that you may see as um, representations of Hispanic culture. So these are some official Lego minifigs that are out there. Um, and they are a little on the stereotypical side, I will admit. They're mostly um, like this guy is Taco, I think he's called Taco Tuesday guy or something like that from the Lego movie. <laughs> um, but he's, he's sporting what many people may associate. And again, this is a little stereotypical, but you know, the sombrero, um, you know, and he, he's got tacos, okay. <laughs> we have a, um, some mariachi band. Um, Lego minifigs that were made. So uh, mariachi band is a very classic uh, folk music uh, from Mexico, traditionally with guitar um, and often dressed in kind of this very ornate black um, outfit. We have someone here with maracas, uh, another very traditional uh, musical el element from uh, Mexico and from Latin America. And then this is their uh, piñata boy. So piñatas are often used in celebration. They are um, paper or plaster of Paris um, creatures, creations that are stuffed with all kinds of treats and then um, whacked until they break open. So um, very, very common tradition. So these are kind of like what Lego has put out as far as minifigs. Now, plenty of people have gotten involved in doing their own cool creations. One of the big um, Hispanic traditions that has made its way to America is that of the sugar skull, the calavera. Now, keep in mind, these are not, <laughs> these aren't treats. These aren't food. They're usually used on the Day of the Dead. Dias Lu Lu <laughs> My Spanish is not good, but the Day of the Dead is November 1st. And the idea is that the veil between 
the land, of the, the land of the living and the land of the dead is supposed to be very thin at that time. And so this is a way to connect with your family that has already passed away. So sugar skulls are made um, as art to commemorate and decorate altars towards those of past grave sites, cemeteries, um, so they're a little scary, but the whole idea is to add things like beautiful color and flowers to the skull to symbolize that union between life and death and the idea that life goes on and a family goes on even after losing someone. So these are four um, sugar skulls created by um, one of the Lego masters that we've actually looked at before. And this is something that you could totally do either flat or rounded and 3D as, as he did, but you could absolutely look at sugar skull designs and create your own in Lego. These are really neat too. These are all custom sugar skulls that people have designed and printed to Lego minifig um, heads. Now, there is no reason that you couldn't get out maybe some fine tipped Sharpies and draw on maybe one of your your um, minifig heads and create your own design. Um, that would be a really fun, challenging project maybe for some of our older Lego lovers. All right, what's next? Ah, so this um, Latin American uh, entertainment site realized that there aren't many Latin American minifigs. And in fact, as we're gonna talk about, there's not a whole lot of Latin American or Hispanic or Latinx um, representation in Lego. So they decided to design using minifig pieces and Photoshop their own tributes to important uh, Latinos and Hispanics. So we have Selena, we have uh, J-Lo, we have um, various sports stars, Frida Kahalo, who is an amazing artist, um, Vincente Fernandez, who is, was an actor, I think he is still an actor, and also um, director of all these movies. So this is a really cool, they did like 17 of them. So I think it's a really cool way to say, all right, we don't have this representation, we're gonna create that representation of our own favorite people. So that's a little bit of the culture, okay? Um, and you can imagine things like quinceañeras, which are um, special celebrations for girls when they turn 15, carnival, which happens, um, you know, in the spring, just before uh, Christians go into Lent. Um, so it's it's similar to Mardi Gras, but they do Carnival in Latin America, which is a huge uh, festi uh, festival and parades. Um, so you can research these different cultural items and see how you might be able to create with Legos. Now, locations. Okay. This I love. This actually uses some of those mariachi um, figures that Lego put out. And this artist who, by the way, Norton74, I suggest you go to his site. He's got a tremendous Flickr account with all kinds of really exciting stuff, especially if you like cars. Um, but this is pretty neat. So he made a traditional kind of hacienda, uh, you know, a um, Mexican style uh, clay home. Uh, and really decorated it so beautifully with these great flowers and even like the little wells, all this attention to detail with the cacti. So this is just a really gorgeous um, piece kind of representing a very traditional household uh, in Mexico. Now, there's a bit of a trend on um, Lego ideas. You know, mocks, remember, you may remember that's um, my own creation. Uh, so lots of people like to share what they create, share the instructions for it. Well, one of the trends is making restaurants of all different kinds and especially trying to make restaurants where you can open it up and look inside and actually have, you know, people seated there or little tables and things. Well, Mexican restaurants are no different. Um, and we have a couple of great examples here. So this is a very authentic, more um, rustic, outdoor um, Mexican restaurant all the way to something that you might find in the city, right, of a very big Mexican restaurant. Um, so that is definitely one of those interesting trends. It's really fun to see all the different ways that people have interpreted that and represented that. You do find um, in Mexico and a lot of Latin American countries, um, there's a lot more use of the outdoors because it is warm, you know, air conditioning is still a relatively new invention. Um, and so there is a lot more kind of outdoor space at restaurants. So that's, that's really neat to see represented here. Okay. 
Now, these are some more historical pieces. So this is a representation of one of the forts in Mexico, which I thought was really well done because um, a person definitely did some research on it. And that's a fun project, right, to go and look into maybe some of the different forts or um, important buildings and rebuilding from those pictures. Here, I know we talked about boats a little while ago, but what a beautiful Spanish ship. Okay, so this would have been a Spanish ship at the time that colonists were coming over or that explorers were coming to America. Um, so that's a really great way to explore Hispanic American culture. And then, as I mentioned, religion is really important in many um, Hispanic and Latino, ex, uh, Latino ah, families. Um, so there are quite a few people that have done these gorgeous churches. Um, so that's a really interesting thing to do. If you have a family that really um, comes together over religion, this might be a project to go and research some of the gorgeous churches that are in Latin America and represent them through Legos. Um, another great trend, Lego started putting out several years ago these Lego architecture kits, and they've done many, many famous cities. Um, Tokyo, uh, Las Vegas, uh, Washington DC, New York, London. Well, they haven't really done any Latin American or South American or Central American um, cities. And so some folks out there, they made their mocks. They have them on ideas.lego.com. And we have here Mexico City. And this is a really beautiful representation, including some of your newest buildings and some of your oldest. Um, and then here we have a representation of Sao Paulo. So, so, hmm, Sao Paulo. I really need to practice my Spanish from high school. Um, but this is from Brazil. Um, and again, a nice representation of a very classic architecture combined with some of the newer architecture down there. So this would be a great project. Pick one of the major cities in Central America, Mexico, South America, find out what important buildings there are and build your own little cityscape. Great architecture project. Okay, this one, I, I'm pretty partial to lighthouses and to scientific uh, endeavors. So this is actually um, the St. John of Rescue um, lighthouse in, I am blanking completely. I am so sorry. I think it's Guatemala, um, but it was also featured in one of the Jules Verne's novels as uh, the lighthouse on the edge of the world. So it's got a, a really neat literary connection as well as a scientific connection and it's a real place. So someone who loves it went ahead and built their representation of it. And what I thought was so cool is that when you pop the top off, you can see they actually built um, like the little computer station for their scientists and medical station and a lab and their little kitchen. So just the attention to detail here, I thought was really neat. And you might be able to find out about some science stations or important scientific work that's going on in Central America, or I know that some of the, the islands are really important for oceanic research. So if you're more of a science nerd like I am, find out what labs and important stations are out there and see if you can re recreate them with Lego. All right, last but not least, um, historical sites. Like I mentioned, there are many, many, many indigenous people that were here before um, North America was colonized and before South America, Central America, and Mexico were colonized two dominant groups that we're very familiar with. Um, there were others, but are the Mayans and the Aztecs. So this is Chichen Itza from Mexico. And this is an example of a Mayan pyramid. Pyramids did not only occur in Egypt. The Mayans and the Aztecs built amazing pyramids as well. I am lucky enough to have been able to travel to these to some of these pyramids and um, explore and actually get to climb. Um, I've actually been to Chichen Itzu. I've been to uh, Tulum. So they are amazing, amazing accomplishments in engineering and architecture. Um, uh, this does not do them justice, but really fun. Maybe get some pictures of these historic sites. Look at that structure. This is a great engineering project to figure out how to build that stepped pyramid shape. Okay, great math project. And then down here, like I said, this is um, an Aztec structure. I admit I am blanking. I really should have written that down. I'm just having one of those days. But um, you can see they both had very similar but distinct pyramid styles. Um, so do some research on that history and that architecture and recreate it with your Legos. So I'm betting you kind of know what our challenge is this week. 
As I mentioned, there's not much represented. In my research for this, I realized there is this tremendous culture of many, many dozens of countries and many different cultures and millions of people and thousands of years. And there's almost nothing in the Lego catalog that represents it. Um, and there aren't many Hispanic or Latino um, Lego masters or artists. It was a real challenge to try and find items to highlight for this video. So my challenge to you is to go to the Hist uh, hispanicheritage.gov website, hispanicheritage hispanicheritagemonth.com website and learn. Look at the art, Look at listen to the music, look at videos, learn about the culture and then create something from what you've learned. It might be about one of the holidays. Um, it might be about some of the food. I mean, you could start as simple as making a taco. It might be about homes or buildings that are common. You might want to research different people that are important and recreate them in Legos or make minifigs that represent them. You may be inspired by different art and music um, from the culture or the dancing from the culture. Um, you might be inspired by the cities we don't think of it sometimes here in North America, but there are amazing cities in South America and Central America um, that are just breathtaking. So research that. Again, the historical locations. Um, there are so many amazing pyramids in jungles and, and research them, recreate them. And of course, if you are more of a biology nut, go for animals, right? There are like macaws and some of the different birds that are common to the jungles, tigers, um, you know, all kinds of amazing animals, not tigers, I think with jaguars, but um, <laughs> go and research what kind of animals there are in South America and Central America and build models of them. So that's your challenge for today. I want you to go to that website. I want you to learn about Latin and his, uh, Latino and Hispanic cultures. Um, find, feed your curiosity and create something to celebrate them. Well, I hope you have some new ideas. Learning about other cultures can be really exciting and it's important to understand and celebrate all the amazing people that make America a great place to live. Perhaps your family is Hispanic or Latinx. Creating art through Lego is a great way to honor your heritage and your family's traditions. I can't wait to see what you make. Get creative and have fun. With your parents' permission, maybe you can even make a video of yourself as you build so you can share your process with others. Remember, we have our safe digital wall at padlet.com slash WCL makers. Be sure to share pictures and ideas on the wall so that we can build our community of Lego lovers. And be sure to check out the library events calendar for lots of other fun story times, events, and activities. We have a spooktacular reading event all during October, so make sure you jump in on that and win some prizes. There's also information about the days that the branches are open, because now each branch is open one day a week. Well, I'll be back again next week at 3 p.m. on Wednesday with more fun LEGO challenges. Until then, my name is Sandy Roberts, and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep building!